So, I'll get straight to the point. Today I'm going to be talking about the Sea Scepter missile, which is manufactured by, obviously, the legendary MDBA of the UK. Sea Scepter is an all-weather maritime air defence missile. Currently it's in service with the Royal Navy, but only in use on the Type 23 frigate as of, I believe, 2018. It's planned to be installed on other platforms like the new Type 26 and the upcoming Type 31 frigate, as well as the Type 45 destroyer. And it's used for short or potentially intermediate air defence, and it replaces the Seawolf missile. So, the requirements of this new missile were, uh, by the MOD I believe, airborne to eliminate airborne targets which are typified by high speed, rapid evasive maneuvers, low signatures, and advanced countermeasures. And the C, the CCAA, uh, CAM, M, missile, it delivers far more than this. It goes above and beyond. And this maritime version of the CAMM is called C Scepter. So, as you probably just realised from me, stuttering uh, and sort of falling over my words, the Sea Scepter is based on the CAMM missile, which stands for Common Anti-Air Modular Missile, and it's for sort of short to intermediate air defence. It's utilised for land systems, uh, called the Land Scepter, and its overall uh, launch system integrated version on land which you'll probably familiar, be familiar with, is called Sky Saber, which is the one replacing Rapier. So, uh, I think I should probably, this is the perfect time actually, to answer a question I got in the comment of, uh, I believe it was a video on, well, it was on another missile system. Anyway, someone called Philip Peterson asked a question, uh, why don't we sort of use land-based air defence missiles for maritime defence? Well, the answer is we do. Uh, often land variants are used for naval defence, and we see a lot of missiles, once they're proven to work, have different variants developed, because it's often cheaper to develop a new variant than develop an entirely new missile system. Uh, and so, the reason you might not necessarily recognise them is they often have different names once they're implemented in different sort of fields of combat. So, Land systems in general, particularly stuff like AA systems, are most simple simple to implement on ships because it's a surface. Uh, as you know, unless one's using planes or an aircraft carrier, the launch mechanisms are fairly similar, um, and despite their differences, it's the same basic principle. You're launching from, I guess you'd say, slow moving or static platforms and its movement in the, in the, into the specific conditions of aircraft altitude in order to eliminate air targets. Uh, anyway, back to Sea Scepter. Why is Sea Scepter so good? Sea Scepter is undoubtedly uh, a leading AA technology at the moment, and CAMM has been very successful in general, both land and sea, namely because it's more than just AA, or more than just AA in the way one would traditionally think about it. I would perhaps designate it as a semi-closing weapons system, and I know that sounds rather odd, um, but the reason I say that is because it doesn't just eliminate aircraft, it can also eliminate other missile threats, meaning it's more useful. Sea Scepter, as I believe MDBA said, it's got a really wide target set, uh, as well as being able to take out aircraft um, and the capability to engage missiles, it can also engage and strike smaller naval vessels. And I think this is an interesting concept, because I was talking to uh, someone about this, and it sort of dawned on me that this might be the future of anti-air missiles for naval use, or even land uh, use, because... There is value in having the versatility to eliminate smaller targets for uh, more specific use AA missiles. So if something like Sea Scepter 
can take out smaller naval targets. Uh, incoming missiles or aircraft, then one can implement it to be more effective, meaning for these smaller threats, one doesn't have to use more potent missiles, and one can save them for the larger, higher status, higher threat threats. One doesn't have to use these impact missiles, naval cruise missiles, uh, operate naval guns in order to take out what can be taken out far more simply, so long as one just implements a few more avionics systems on uh, anti-air missiles. So I think that's quite important. They're described as these pesky little threats, something like uh, a small boat, uh, perhaps an unmanned boat. Threats that are most definitely threats and obviously must be eliminated, but nowadays necessitate excessive firepower, and apologies, I keep smashing my glass up against the table. Uh, or a helicopter launch in order to take it out, or the engagement of weapon systems for minimal purpose or for not their purpose, because what's foreseen is generally larger threats. So perhaps that's what we'll see with the implementation of more versatile anti-air missiles so that we can have more specialised larger target missiles. Anyway, I am getting distracted. Not only does Sea Scepter defend from all of these threats, it's incredibly versatile, uh, but it can do it for an entire strike or escort group. So it has multi-ship systems built in, meaning it doesn't just protect the ship that it's launched from itself. It can utilize other ships' uh, sensors systems and such. So in the sort of manner we see ships traditionally operating, you have destroyers and frigates quite literally lining the outside of strike groups because they are a literal, literal physical shield. If something is to get to the carrier, let's say it's a carrier strike group, it has to go past them, and in going past them, it puts itself in danger. But with the utilization of this system, which means you can have multi-platform or at least multi-ship systems, it means that you can quite literally have a full-on shield, um, full-on air defense all around the ship, which is incredibly useful because it means if you have a central ship, that might not be so defended from... I mean, obviously, it's not too likely that anything else would get through this barrier around it, but it means it's more protected on top because it is a literal sort of dome-shaped shield as opposed, as opposed to uh, a lot of domes surrounding one central asset. Uh, so that's quite important. It can defend other ships as well. I'll get into the specs now. So... Uh, I believe the system that's used for CAM is, it has a variant uh, called C-A-M-M-E-R, which is the intermediate variant. So I think c Scepter uses C-A-M-M alone, but again, please, if I am wrong, do correct me, because I'm not 100% sure. So anyway, for C-A-M, it has C-A-M-M, it has a mass of 99 kilograms. It has a 3.4 meter length and a 0 0.166 meter diameter. And I have decided to use the metric system for specifications because it seems more professional when talking about engineering. Uh, something that was highly, highly emphasized in my design GCSE. So for the ER variant, all of these specifications are larger so it can facilitate a further strike. So if I do turn out to be wrong, then you know, you can look it up. Um, there are various resources for it. The war head is uh, directed fragmentation, which is triggered by a either contact or proximity fuse. And obviously, in this scenario, contact is the ideal fuse, because you want to get the most direct hit, but obviously, if it can't be contact, then it will be proximity-based. In regard to what uh, directed fragmentation is. What this does is it effectively utilizes a cover of some sort. You have um, a cover at the front of the warhead and on the sides, usually utilizing steel um, or alumi aluminium or some kind of composite material, uh, which will often have layered fragmentation elements within it. So these layered fragmentation elements will quite literally be layered um, and they usually contain some sort of metal ball structure, which is often held together by 
uh, resin or some other bondage agent. And this is, of course, accompanied by the explosive material, which is in a lot of cases powder. So, when detonation or activation occurs, about 30% of this explosive power of the kinetic energy goes towards the fragmentation of the cover itself and into the propulsion of these uh, fragment layers, which will then be directed towards the target, and that's why it's called directed fragmentation. For propulsion, it utilizes uh, a solid fuel rocket motor, which gives it good operational range. And dependent upon how far, well, not how far it has to go, but how much it has to manoeuvre, let's say, because that will obviously mean that it won't have so much range, it can go up to about 25 kilometres and can travel at a speed of up to Mach 4, roughly. Although I don't think it's quite as fast as our Star Streak, luckily. I don't think. Uh, and it utilises a two-way data link, which is obviously important, and that sort of helps facilitate active radar homing because then you have more uh, in-touch, up-to-date computer systems. So, just to go over C-Scepter, C-Scepter performs really well. As we've said, it's got this two-way data link, which is useful for obvious reasons. It's got active radar homing, which is pretty good um, for such capable missile because it means there's no need to implement more high-cost illumination uh, or fire radar controls, or control radars in this case. Um, generally, it's fairly low cost and low maintenance as a unit, which is an incredibly positive thing. For launch, it uses, which I thought was quite interesting and rather unique, it uses a uh, cold launch, sort of a soft launch system, uh, via a gas canister, which means it can go a little bit further because the fuel isn't used up in launch uh, and it has a lower launch profile. Speaking of canisters, while it can be integrated into VLS systems as, as it is being integrated, uh, Mark 41 for most systems, for most ships in the Royal Navy, it does come with its own canister system which can be implemented and either of those give it a 360 degree coverage of targets. So I think I'll leave it there as my voice is for some reason rather dry today. Um, C-Scepter's an excellent missile. Please go check it out.